Kayla Hopper, thank you so much for coming on the Uniweb interview show. I'm your host, Matthew Whiteside. Kayla, how are you today? You're like freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm peachy. peachy. And I'll give you that fair warning that I was talking about right as you hit the record button. If I um, refer to myself as Dixie unintentionally, oh. that's my Twitch username. And I often forget that I have a real name. But that's right. I don't so go D by so very Dixie often. Is your Dixie is your Twitch streaming name that you use, and Kayla Hopper is your real name real that thing. you yes. that you use for your published books. Yes. <laughs> yes. So Kayla is an author. Um, she wrote a novella called The Mist, which I just finished reading, um, and she's also a Twitch streamer for um, for you read some yes. of your works, right? But you also are doing it for what's the organization called? Uh, we support a movement. It's not an organization. We just have a movement. Okay. It's hashtag we play for the 22. And okay. we choose a different charity every month to benefit veteran suicide awareness and prevention. Right. Awesome. So, Kayla, thank you so much for coming on. Um, Thanks I'm glad for that, I'm glad that you're peachy. I do <laughs> want to I I I talk to you about your books, and I want to talk to you about the, uh, the charitable stuff that you're doing. Um, first, let's get into The Mist. Okay. This is the first public, published works of yours, right? This is something that you've finally put out. You've written before. Yes, I've things. written lots and lots before, since kindergarten. Okay, so let's... What is The Mist about, and why was it the first thing you decided to put out there? So The Mist was actually kind of a big deal in my writing career because it was written um, at a time where I was first diagnosed with psychological disorders. Um, and I allowed myself to embrace those. Okay. Um, I stopped allowing society to tell me I was broken at that point, which was kind of a big deal to me. Um, because everybody had told me, oh, here's this medicine to fix you, to fix you. And I finally said, you know what? I'm not broken. And this is the art I can create with what I've been given. So I channeled what I had been given into something beautiful. The book is based in my hometown. Hey. hey. <laughs> Bella, come here. Say, I just want to be a part of things. I know. Oh, hello, little floofer. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. It was okay. <laughs> the I book apologize. is based in my hometown, um, which is kind of just a podunk little town that nothing exciting really ever happens in. We had an annual harvest festival that I remember going to growing up and I always kind of wished as the awkward goth kid growing up that something <laughs> exciting and fantastical would happen like dragons and fairies and weird stuff would pop out of the woodwork so I made that happen in this book and I brought it all to life and I didn't want rainbows and bunnies and Tinkerbell to show up I wanted the way that fairies and stuff were in actual lore so it was a dark fantasy and um there are definitely times where it gets pretty dark it is and it's really interesting i love i love the theme because it, it gives off that it's like a it's not necessarily scary but it's like an eerie uh eerie darkness that you're just kind of like holy crap <laughs> what the hell's going on here and it's it is fun. I I really did in, enjoy it. Um, I do want to go back real quick because and touch on something you said about uh, the psychological disorders and how you know you decided to you know you're not broken. You're just it's just you're the way you think and, and do things is a little bit different. And you're creating now based off of that. It had to have, had to have been a freeing thing for you to lean in. When we learn how to lean into the things that people say make us broken or weird or different, we lean into it, we kind of become our truest best selves, right? 
It it was. It was really hard because it separated me from people my age a lot. It separated me from people who wanted to... There were groups of adults who wanted to just coddle me and fix me. Right. There were groups of adults who wanted to analyze me and fix me and segregate me from their children as though I were plagued and contagious. And I was even in one position um, where my best friend's mom told me that she couldn't hang out with me anymore because I was the spawn of Satan. And I was like, all right, well, you Have a nice are day. <laughs> a wonderful role model for your child. Yeah. Like, it, it's cruel the way that people teach people to judge others that way. Like, yeah. I, I spent years being told it was all in my head. Well, guess what, people? Of course it was. It's a psychological yeah. disorder. That's yeah. where it resides. Is the, right. It's in your head. <laughs> and it doesn't make it any less real because it's in your head, right? It's like, yeah, I know. It's obvious. Like, the one organ I would be pretty out of luck with is in my head, too. So... Right. <laughs> yeah, I think that the whole the stigma towards any kind of mental health issues, um, the way we talk about it, the way, you know, we go about... Uh, communicating and and just interacting with people with mental health disorders is has been something that's been completely screwed up for a lot of human history. It's just now coming to the forefront where hey maybe we're going about this the wrong way. Maybe you know these people aren't just insane and crazy and we should be kicked to the kicked to the curb or or thought of as evil or whatever it is. It's like let's have a conversation about it but it's scary people don't like having conversations about things they don't understand Absolutely. you know it's like it's like they, people don't understand sex people don't understand god people don't understand their ideas of god people don't understand money and they don't like having conversations about it people don't understand mental disability dis disorders and so nobody wants to have a conversation about it but the only way we can come to understand it is by talking about it right absolutely i think that also ties in a lot to why i support the causes I do with the veteran causes that I support because the VA is not supporting the vets and their families the way that they should be. They are sending our soldiers out there and breaking them and then they are coming home fighting a whole new war and not getting the help that they need here at home. And nobody is answering their cries for help. Right. And Which it's is, sad. It's very sad. Yeah, it's it's like we know we can do more. I think I think a lot of it is that we know we can do more, but nobody wants to to really take on that on that uh become the champion of doing more. For like the people who are capable of really doing something, it's just like, well, nah, I don't want to have time for that. It's too much it's too much of a of a hassle. I think the saddest part is that as a society, we need to not so much do more as do better for each right. other. Yeah. I think it, it does start with the whole um, just being willing to communicate in a, in a different form as opposed to uh, a fear-based form. Like if you don't understand what I'm saying, if, if something doesn't come across the right way, then immediately I'm angry with you or you're angry with me or whatever it is. It's like that's all based in fear as opposed to something based in love and understanding where let's have a conversation. If we don't get it this time, we'll try again tomorrow. You know? Exactly. Like, I think a better world is all going to start with people just being willing to smile at a stranger. Yeah. Like what happened to that? Like smile at the people you walk by in the store. Tell the lady you walk by that she looks good in that color. Tell the gentleman in the store next to you that he looks nice in his new hat. Like, it's not hard to be a nice person. No. I complimented my friend's eyes the other day, and he's like, oh, my goodness, Dixie, you're married. I said, 
Yeah, and my husband's sitting right here next to me. But you have nice eyes. I'm not hitting on you. You have nice eyes. Yeah, I know. It's it's one of those things where it's like we can't even be nice to each other without some other underlying connotation being involved. But in reality, it's like we forgot how to be kind to one another. Me and my kids call it the share a smile lifestyle. The share a smile lifestyle? Mm-hmm. I like that. No, it's true. I mean, honestly, like I'll 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 go out to the store and I'll see people and I'll smile. I typically smile at people when I see them, but I always get the same like head down kind of. Yeah, just, they like, like try and avoid eye contact. I think we're all so much in our own world. We we all, as much as we talk about mental mental disorders too, we all live so much up here, you know, that we can't see everything else around us. And one of the things that I love about doing um, stuff online and um, like this kind of format with Skype, and I'm sure you can attest this with Twitch, it's like this is what the internet, this is what connectivity is about. It's getting to see all the people for who they are and connect on a wider, wider range, but bringing that like getting out of getting out of ourselves and into other people, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've made better connections truer connections with the friends that i've made through twitch and through that platform than with friends that i've known in real life for multiple decades right and i could easily say that if i were in a crisis situation these people that i know through my online communities would be their hands down quicker for me than these people that I've known half my life in person. And I mean, it's a sad fact of reality, but it is reality. Right. And it's something that obviously is now coming to the forefront of human consciousness. And then we're starting to hopefully pinpoint it. And like you said, not do more, but do better, right? Once we know better, we need to start working to do better. Um, so getting back to the mist, how has publishing, because this was a big, this is like a big thing for you, publishing your first work. You, you told me before, like putting everything else has always been put up on the shelf. Getting the mist out there, what has that done for you? Um, when I first published the ebook, it sat on Amazon dead for years. Um, and I had zero motivation to self-market it. I was horrible as a self-published author. Like, I I was useless. (laughs) And um, I was in a pretty unsavory relationship with my now, thankfully, Mm -hmm. ex-husband. And I just didn't have the self-confidence or the self-esteem to push the sales or to push my books it may as well have still been on the shelf. Right. Um, Then about three years ago, I got so lucky and my high school sweetheart came back into my life around the same time that me and my ex-husband ended up splitting because I decided to go back to school. He decided that was not acceptable (laughs) we all have our limits that's right (laughs) sometimes we grow apart (laughs) yeah i would rather my kids have two happy homes than one miserable one so it's okay Absolutely. absolutely um but now i have my high school sweetheart back and he has found love somewhere else so all is well it worked out right Um, but with my husband now, he gives me that wholeness that I needed to find that love and that passion for writing again. And Mm -hmm. granted, I have had probably like the world's worst case of writer's block (laughs) for a while now. (laughs) I'm struggling here. (laughs) Yeah. But he gave me that fire back. And when he gave me that, 
it gave me that drive to put the paperback version out. And as soon as the paperback version came out, it just launched. Like, a ton of people ended up grabbing it up. Um, but by then, I had already launched Storytime with Dixie on mm-hmm. Twitch. And I had launched the platform on Twitter promoting Storytime with Dixie a few months prior to actually launching it on Twitch. So I already had, like, I think I had a couple hundred follower base on Twitter before I launched it on Twitch. Yeah. So I already had a following base on Twitter and Twitch before the paperback went live on Amazon. Mm -hmm. So I got lucky in that startup. (laughs) Yeah. So it just kind of gave me that little boost of confidence that I needed to get going again. And then you popped up in my Twitter feed, and here we are. Here we are. Yeah, talking about it. I know. You, know, you, you mentioned uh, having writer's block. I like to believe, and this has been true for me a lot of times uh, when I've struggled to get something written, is that it's not that I'm I'm blocked from writing. It's that... I'm unwilling to write what I'm feeling or what's honestly going on inside my head because it's not the direction I was hoping to go. Like, it's not what I was expect. Like I expect to finish this damn book, you know? And, and sometimes my head's like, yeah, but we should really deal with what's going on. Why don't we write about that today? And as long as I'm willing to just, okay, let's write about that. Then I can write about every, anything. You know, that's probably the most sense that, like, I could ever explain what's been going on in my head, and I couldn't have logically gotten to that answer ever on my own. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's come through lots and lots of of, uh, of terrible days of writing, to where it's like, I really don't, I really don't want to write this thing, Matt, but if you ever want to write anything else again, you better just write this thing and get it out and, <laughs> you know, and just be done with it. Like, because it, I find that like, because th- if you think about it, do I ever not have something to say? No, I've always got something to say. There's always some, there's always voices in my head that are constantly doing something. Just put them down. Just like, let them talk. So they'll shut up. They'll be heard. You know, they want, it's just like your voices want to be heard. Let them be heard. And then the voice that you want to listen to can be heard a little bit clearer. And so I've come to that realization. It's not easy at all. <laughs> it's like, With that being said, do you ever find yourself battling with what answer to give when people ask you what genre you write in? Yeah, all the time. Well, I still don't know. Like the book I just wrote, I don't know what freaking genre it is. There's too many genres, in my opinion, and they're like all mixed. and subgenres. And... Subgenres, and it's like I just want to be like it's fiction. <laughs> it's not real. <laughs> this didn't happen. <laughs> this didn't ha- yeah, it kind. I mean, yeah, it kind of happened. This might my... loosely be based on people I really met. <laughs> yeah, loosely based truths on my life, but completely not even close. It's like, yeah, it's fiction. But I, I can't get... I, I don't, what would you classify The Mist as? Uh, the Mist is a dark fantasy. Dark fantasy, yeah. It's hard, though, right? Like, And then the one I am getting ready to publish is a horror romance. <laughs> but don't you think... And, and here's, here's another thing about... When we talk about genres, like, most books have romance in them. There's some form of romance. But not all, like, not all books are considered, like, are either horror romance or, like, fantasy romance or erotic. It's just, like, you know what I'm saying? So, from my understanding, it has to be more than, like, a quarter of the plot line. Like, the the agent that I talked to... Yeah. Uh, said that it has to take up more than a quarter of the plot line to really qualify as a romance uh-huh. novel. If it has romance stuff going on in the background of the subplots, it, it happens in pretty much every book. Right. But 
if it's not in the forefront of almost every plot line, it's probably not a romance. Gotcha. Mine is a horror romance because it's like in your face. Somebody's doing something. (laughs) Somebody's doing something. Is that the one you, that's the one you're writing right now? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm working on the second in that novella series. That one, I'm just, that first one, I'm just waiting on the cover art to send that one in. Oh, so it's done. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. When do you, uh, so once the cover art comes back, are you going to have it published? Yep, I'm going live on Amazon with that one as soon as the cover art's done. I actually am featuring another Twitch streamer um, on the cover of that one. Wow. That's exciting. Yeah. Are you, are you, uh, have you done anything different this time around? I mean, in terms of promoting the new book that's coming out? Um, this one I have. I originally started promoting this book on Facebook a long time ago, mm-hmm. but I have since removed that page from Facebook because I no longer use my personal Facebook page to promote books. I yeah. strictly use my Twitter and my Twitch. Um, I had an Instagram but it got hacked and then got closed down and now it will neither let me create a new account nor access the account to close it down. <laughs> Don't you do you ever feel overwhelmed by all the social media platforms that you try to go at? Um I used to be the head of social media managing like seven different accounts for my dad's company, so not really. Yeah. Uh well, do you have any like uh, tips in terms of managing so many different accounts at once? If you have a lot of accounts that you manage for the same purpose, mm-hmm. do a lot of copy and paste. But make sure you make small tweaks that make just enough alteration to the post that people's eyes aren't going to notice that it's the same post and make those tweaks before you post so that you're still just copy and pasting onto the post. So make a word document and have it very organized by what platform you need to put your posts into, make your original post and then copy and paste into all your platforms, make the, uh, alterations for each platform as you need like removing hashtags or removing content based on word count and then copy and paste directly from the word document every time it's a full-time job doing i mean obviously oh, yeah. you did it it was it's a lot to do <laughs> yeah it really can be um I don't know if you remember the old, like, I think it was on Comedy Central or something like that, uh, the extreme couponers, like the little housewives that would sit in their house and, like, clip coupons. It's just like that. You're you're just, like, trying to tweet all day, like, I can do this, I can do this, (laughs) I will be social. I know. It's exhausting. (laughs) Absolutely exhausting. But that's, I mean, like, when we become, when we publish our work, we become small businesses. You know, I mean, it's like, it's now our responsibility to do as much or as little as we deem necessary to run a, a, a good business, right? Yeah, and when you're self-publishing, you take it all on. Yeah. Be, with, <laughs> getting comfortable. It's... <laughs> Uh, I'm sitting on my dog's little mini Shay lounge. Yeah. I don't know where my dog went. I think somebody took her. The door, which is good. She's being annoying. <laughs> somebody stole my dog. It's all good, guys. Somebody broke in and stole my dog during an interview. Don't worry about it. She'll be fine. So, 
You um so with the cover art though, did you have a friend who's doing the cover art for you for this next book, or did you like find an artist out there somewhere? On the mist, or mm. on the the new one on that's new coming one. out. Uh, new the one. new one is book one in the Devil's Parish series, and a friend of mine from one of my online communities. Um, excuse me, off of Twitch is actually posing for the cover art. Oh, so it's going to be like a live camera shot. Yes. What's it? Can you kind of give us a hint of what it's going to look like? Um, think of like a, ha a happy medium love child kind of carry meets oh. the ring. Like the little oh, girl wow. from the ring. Yeah. That's kind of terrifying. That sounds terrifying. I can totally picture that. And is this something you're going to be reading? Are are you? Do you read your um, any of your new stuff on Twitch, or are you only reading stuff you've read in the past? So there were a bunch of vods of me reading stuff on Twitch already. Um, I I recently went down uh, through and took all of those down. Um, because I'm redoing my setup, and in the process of doing that, I want to redo all my VODs and my uh, all my readings to make them more professional. Um, so once they go back up, it will all just be stuff that has already been written that'll be getting I read. Okay. Um, I want to make sure everyone knows too. So with the hashtag, uh, is hashtag twenty two? It's movement. hashtag we play for the twenty two. We play for the twenty two. Every month they're doing a new um, charity, correct? Yes. Every month charity. we pick a new charity to donate to. And fifty percent of everything that you sell and from from your publishing, from now until forever, the rest of, forever goes towards whatever that charity is that month. Yep, a big, for the big rest, rest of my writing career, my dad's a vet, my uncles are both vets. I tried to go into the Army. I was injured in basic training and got sent home after fracturing both of my hips and crushing four of the bones in the top of my foot. Um, there wasn't what really... What were you doing? Uh, I was in with a bunch of guys that didn't believe that women should be allowed to serve. And one of them knocked me off of an obstacle course. And when I fell, those were the injuries I sustained. And that, alongside with the psychiatric disorders that I was already facing, um, my stability just wasn't enough for me to handle recuperation. And so it... It wasn't a stable environment for me mentally, sure. and they sent me home. Um, so I oh, got sent home in training, so I'm not a veteran. Um, right. My husband's a veteran. A majority of the community members that I'm friends with are veterans or veteran spouses. There's... So many different charities out there that we've already supported. I don't know the exact figures offhand. I think I have them right here. Give me one second. That's in, that sounds. I mean, to fall from uh, obstacle course like that. I mean, did you try to land on your feet and you just like? No, I was actually. Um, I was supposed to be crossing this two by four from one board to the next. And he kicked it out from under me, and I just went flat down, and I landed on the face of my hips and fractured both of them. Oh, my God. It was rather unpleasant. Yeah. The healing, um, I never healed properly because I didn't allow myself to. I came home, and I had to immediately go back to work i was only 18. yeah so i had to me immediately go back to work oh my lanta the one time i don't have this information available here it is 
Okay, so as of April, we've donated to five different charities. Um, six now, including April's, but we don't. I don't have the numbers for that one yet. And we are sitting over three thousand dollars donated. Wow. To different charity organizations for veteran suicide awareness and prevention. That's awesome. And I mean, if we can even just help one person, yeah, to know that their voice is heard yeah that's all we want right and i think i mean that's what this is that's what this is all about right even like when i was talking about writing earlier like all of us we want to be heard even even all the voices in our heads want to be heard and there's so many people out there that are hurting because they feel like they have no one to connect to they feel lost alone terrified Like, what's the point of being alive anymore? You know, there's no use in going on. Um, For me, I I struggled with alcoholism in the past and have been to the point where I thought I was I was going to take my own life and that kind of thing. So I know the the feeling of like, what's the point of trying anymore? So I completely sympathize um, with that sentiment, and it's only because I've learned how to reconnect with people. Um, that my life has changed and working a program and, and connecting with things that are important. But like you said, like making sure that people don't feel alone, you know, like we don't, there's so, there's seven, over 7 billion people on this planet. We should never feel alone, but it happens every day. And the, the rate of suicide has gone up a, a crazy amount in, in the, just the past five years. The worst part is that most of the people that are the loneliest are sitting in some of the most crowded rooms. Yeah. And the people sitting next to them are just as lonely. And if they would just turn to each other and smile, they could start a conversation and they wouldn't have to be lonely anymore. And they could better each other's lives and maybe give each other some purpose. That's all it takes. Two seconds is all it takes to make one person feel like it's okay to not be okay. Yep. Absolutely. And I think that's the most important thing we can do is share vulnerably. Like anytime it's tough when you're in a place where you feel sick and alone, you don't want to turn to people and talk. You don't, I know that. So it's important for people who have come out of that, like me, I try as often as possible to share that vulnerability of where I was and how how sick I feel sometimes, and because it's still a reality, it still it still happens. But by doing that, by sharing where I'm at uh, in life, that vulnerability, it gives other people strength. You know, even though it may appear as weakness, so like, look at him, he's just crying about his pitiful life. That's bullcrap. Like the whole idea of men are supposed to be strong and not allowed to talk about their emotions and feelings it's all garbage like it is it takes serious strength to become aware of you know the sickness and sadness inside your own mind and then put voice to it and doing that i've seen it happen i've seen it light up a group of other guys who were terrified to speak and by sharing my story gave them strength to share theirs it's like We have to be willing to do it, right? Yeah, you can't... My dad always told me... Without change, there can never be improvement. But but change never guarantees improvement. Right. You can't get to the next level without taking the first step. But you're not going to promise that that next level is going to be something better just because it's different but you have to do something different Mm -hmm. to get there you have to do it and people just have to take that leap of faith sometimes and nobody's willing to do it anymore and we we have to be that 
stepping stone to help society be willing to do it. And I try to do that with my books. I try to bring a more beautiful way of looking at the darker realities of the human mind and of life. Uh, yeah. A lot of those creatures and characters are based on actual myths and lore. Um, in the mist, I used a lot of Celtic lore and Gaelic lore. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but those ones, I did a lot of research on different creatures and how they would appear, how they would behave, uh, the different cries and stuff that they would use. Um, and I use those different attributes to try to accentuate the way that we behave in times of crisis. Right. And I think people tend to respond better to crisis when it's pretty. Yeah. When there's a, a chance of uh, heroics. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You did a wonderful job with The Mist, for sure. Um, like I said, and I, anybody out there watching this, um, I, I think I, I want to support you as much as possible in what you're doing with Twitch. Um, where, can they, where can they go and find you? Because I'll put, I'll put links in the description of the video. Um, but those who aren't f familiar, they can find, uh, they can go on Twitch, and your stream specifically is titled... Uh, Dixie underscore kerosene. Dixie underscore kerosene, right? And you're also on um, on Twitter at uh, yes, Dixie kerosene eighty nine, right? Yes, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. We'll, we'll make sure. We'll make sure I'm and put sure. it. We'll make sure and put it in the links in the description because honestly, this is something that needs a, a louder voice. Uh, it needs as much awareness as possible because there are too many people dying out there that don't need to be. You know, they don't. There's too many people suffering from mental mental disorders that don't need to be, um, because, like you said, we're all right here. All we have to do is turn and talk to each other. And, and I I just want to on that note say the We Play Twenty for the Twenty Two does support the veteran suicide charities, but we are here for everyone. Like right. if you have a problem and need an ear there's always someone in our community that is here to listen always like you do not need to be a veteran to have a voice like we care about everybody and how would they how do they go about reaching out is to we support 22 is there um a there website? is a hashtag we play for the 22 on facebook you can hashtag we play for the 22 on twitter okay. um if you just use the hashtag Someone will contact you off of the hashtag. We keep an eye on it pretty closely. There are dozens and dozens of us watching for that hashtag regularly. Okay. We play and for they the are team. also welcome to just contact me directly, and I will get them somebody to talk to. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Kayla Hopper, you're doing awesome work. Dixie Kerosene. <laughs> I thank you so much for your time coming on and uh, the work you are doing for veterans. It's fantastic and for uh, others suffering with uh, mental disorders. So thank you. Thank you for having me and for reading my book. <laughs> it's my pleasure. I'll be reviewing it soon. So. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's good. It'll be good. It, it really was good. Everyone go out and check out The Mist. On a, it's on Amazon. And... Uh, Check out Kayla Hopper on her Twitch stream, Dixie underscore kerosene. Right? All right. Thanks, Matt. You well, have a good day. Thanks, you too. Bye.